Now that we've been here for about two months, we figure it's about time for a shop tour. Stick around and we'll show you the exact numbers of what it costs to have a place like this. We're gonna show you all of our tools, our whole workflow and everything. I'm really excited, let's go. So let's talk a little bit about the space itself. So this is 4,200 square feet, including both the warehouse and the office areas. And it's about one third office space and two thirds warehouse space. We have neighbors on both sides. One's an auto mechanic and the other one, I don't know exactly what he does, but he's really nice. So we really lucked out with our neighbors. If you want to go back and watch the whole story of how we started touring places and how we decided on this specific warehouse, go back and watch this playlist right here. So we're gonna start the tour where everybody wants to start it in the shop. So this is our first garage bay door. Our warehouse is in a U shape. So we're starting on the first end of the U with the garage door and our big lumber rack. This thing has been great, holds a lot of lumber. It was actually really nice when we started this kitchen table. We could move lumber from side to side and sort through it very easily. So even, I mean, that's just a perk now, but once this guy gets full, um, man, it's just gonna be really nice to have so much lumber on hand. We don't have to worry about driving back and forth to the lumber store so often. We got this lumber rack off of Uline, the industrial Amazon website. Most of what you see here got, came either from Uline or the obvious tool manufacturer where it came from. But if you have any questions on where we got stuff, we don't take tool sponsors. We bought everything with our own money dollars. So if you got any questions down below, we'll uh, leave you our honest feedback and where we got the thing from. Next up is our eight inch Powermatic joiner. It's it's nice, it's the uh, the dovetail one. It's not the parallelogram one. For those of you that are interested in a joiner, go with the parallelogram one. Don't do the dovetail one. It's hard to level the tables if you ever need to, but it works for now. We need to get something bigger, but there we can take the lumber off the lumber rack, take it to the joiner and start the milling process. So now that we've been here for a couple of months, it's turned out to be an amazing space for us. It's exactly what we needed right now. There's a little room to grow, but it's also not too big or too small. The property manager has been absolutely incredible. Someone was really watching out for us when we got this space. And next up is our 12 inch Bosch sliding miter saw. This is the same one we had in our old shop. It does the job. It works really well. A long, long time ago, we did not have one of these sliding miter saws and it gave us so much trouble and we absolutely love having this one. So after we take the wood off of the lumber rack, it's so easy to just walk it right over here to the miter saw and cut it down to size before we continue the rest of the milling process. It also has its own dedicated dust collection system modeled after none other than Drew Fisher's box d dust collection system. I don't actually know what he calls it, but Drew Fisher did it and it's good. All right, next up is gonna be our 20 inch Grizzly planer. This thing is a beast. We absolutely love it. It handles anything we can throw at it. We've tripped the breaker once and that's because we were doing something stupid. The, the tool can handle a full 20 inches of white oak, no problem. It's great. We finally got the kinks worked out. You saw that in a couple of videos ago, um, but yeah, it's nice. So this is our two horsepower Harbor Freight dust collector. This was our OG dust collector in our old shop. And we had it in the shed for a long time because we didn't have room for two, but now we do. So we pulled it out of storage and have it connected to all the tools on this side of the shop. So this bag did not come with it. This is an aftermarket bag just to get some of the finer particles out of the air. Um, if you're interested in it, the brand is PowerTech just to keep our lungs safer. Eventually, we're gonna have a professional dust collection system routed all in this entire area, but this works for now. I'm not gonna die for using this in the next six months. Thank you for your concern. So this really completes our entire milling section. Um, after that, the wood's ready to go to be used for whatever project. The last thing we have is this little cart over here for the milling station. It's just full of hand tools and miscellaneous type tools that we might want while we're over here um, with all the milling equipment. And in every section of the shop, we have a tourniquet and an Israeli compression bandage. We also have a couple first aid kits just to make sure that no matter where you are in the shop, you have access to first aid and you don't have to walk very far to get to it. We also made sure that these things are all accessible from the ground. So if you chop your leg off, you're laying on the floor, you're able to grab one of these easily enough. If you look at this tourniquet, it's also already Velcroed and ready to go. All you have to do is open this up and put it on whatever is remaining of your limb and strap it tight because in an emergency, the last thing you wanna do is be fumbling around with all this Velcro and figuring it out for the first time. Also, any future employees are gonna get a very thorough and hands-on training on how to use both of these and everything that's in the first aid kit just so that everybody in the shop is at the same level and everybody can be trusted to take care of each other should anything bad happen because it's not a matter of if, it's it's when. And if you think otherwise, you're just kidding yourself. All right, next up is our 14 inch Rikon bandsaw, complete with 
Matt Kumana sticker. Hi, Matt. This is a really nice bandsaw. Um, I don't know, it's a thousand bucks, but it's 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 a good bandsaw, it's not a great bandsaw. What we learned is that bandsaw is 10% saw, 90% blade. So we use the skip tooth blade, it's called the wood slicer from Highland Woodworking. It's a great blade, we buy them five, 10 at a time and throw them out when they get dull because it's just not worth our time to get them sharpened. All right, so next up is our Grizzly table saw. It's a really great table saw. It replaced an old rigid table saw that I got from Home Depot and this thing has been great. The one thing I did do to it is I put the rails on one set of holes further down because back when I got this table saw, we were doing a lot of plywood projects and I thought I would like the extra uh, rip capacity. It can go up to like 40 inches or something crazy. I've never used it that far. So um, it really gets in the way more than it has helped us out. So um, I'd like to put the bolts back to where they were, but then I'd have to get a new measuring tape for the fence and that just sounds like a lot of work. So. This is how it's gonna stay. It's a two horsepower saw. It's wired to 220, but it can also flip back and forth between 120 and 240 or whatever. That was one of the only requirement I had when I got this table saw. We did not buy a saw stop, but that's probably what we're gonna get in the future just for liability and insurance reasons. I also have this outfeed slash assembly table that we built in the garage. It works really great as an outfeed table. We're trying to do this new thing in this shop where everything here is a purchased item. I don't wanna have any like custom built tables or anything like that because God willing, we get to franchise this business one day. I don't wanna to have to build a whole bunch of custom stuff. We can just buy off the shelf products to plug into the business and use. Um, I don't think I'm special enough that I need something custom built. We should be able to get by and use tools that are commercially available. Up next is our Supermax 1938 drum sander. This is a fairly new addition. We got this while we were still in the garage, but it was one of the last tools that we added to our garage shop. And now we love it. It makes the cutting board process go so much faster. It's definitely one of those tools that you put off buying for a while because you keep saying, oh, I don't need one of those. I don't need one of those. But once you have it, you wonder how you ever operated without it because it has just been so convenient and makes cutting boards a breeze. So we keep 120 grit sandpaper on it at all times because after we run the boards through this, we do hand sand them up to 220 grit. So 120 grit is a perfect balance between taking off enough material of the boards, but also not scarring it and leaving deep scratch marks in the boards so that we can't hand sand it out afterwards. Pro tip, get yourself one of these sandpaper cleaning blocks. We can post the link um, down in the description, but it helps keep the sandpaper clean and it really just lengthens the time that you can use the sandpaper and the lifetime of the tool. Next up is our home-built router table. We have the infamous Bosch router. I don't remember the model number, but it's the Bosch router you see everywhere. Um, suspended upside down and we use the Craig router lift. It's a really great lift. I just wish the whole cabinet was pre-made or purchased. Um, I don't like the fact that I made this myself because of what we talked about earlier, but um, it works for now. Eventually we're going to need two or three of these guys because I hate changing bits in this thing, especially between cutting board operations. Uh, it just really slows down the process. So we'll probably get a second or third router table in the future, but this one works for now. All right, so this is our big Laguna dust collector. Um, I think it's discontinued now. They're apparently they're coming out with their latest and greatest version, but this thing has been awesome. Um, it's got a huge HEPA filter on the back. So all the air coming out is super clean. Um, it's just, this is a breeze to change out because all I have to do is lift this bar, pull out the cart and dump the bag. It's, it's so much easier than fighting with the Harbor Freight one. This is a definite upgrade. It's got way more suction than the Harbor Freight one. And uh, I have to change the bag out more often, but that's okay, I'll live with that. Um, it's hooked up to every tool from the table saw down to the router station. Yeah, it's a great tool. It works for now. Uh, but eventually for dust collection, we want a whole plumbed in system through the ceiling, but that'll be another day. This is Chester, as Jenny has aptly named for no other reason than what it, why did you name it Chester? Look at it. It's just, it looks like a little dude, like a little robot. It has little wheels. That's his, that's his body. It's like his hips. And then he's right here and he's his little head. So we have two Chesters. We have a sander on the top of each one of them because sometimes you just need two sanders. 
Um, and this one has the Festool Domino, which we use for alignment and furniture building. And the other one has our Makita track saw in it. Um, the Festool dust extractors work really well to keep the dust contained. Uh, they're a dream to have. If you're gonna spend some money on a tool, make sure it's on your sander and on a good track saw um, and good dust collection for both of them. Here on this cart, we've got our little tiny baby drill press and the uh, oscillating spindle sander or oscillating belt sander, depending on how we've got it configured. These tools are really nice. We use this one in our charcuterie boards and then this one is just nice to have a nice sander because um, you don't need it very often, but when you need it, you need it. And uh, it's just been a great tool. We got another one of these tool carts that just holds supplies like sandpaper and uh, drill bits and some other things. Again, we've got another tourniquet, another compression bandage. Um, easily accessible in case of emergencies. So this pretty much takes care of all of what we call the shaping and forming tool section. Um, theoretically, with cutting board production at least, it starts down at that garage door and usually there's a big assembly table here which we'll show you in a second, but the whole cutting board and charcuterie board process is just done in this one hallway, which leaves all this other space open for kitchen tables or larger projects or things of that nature. And that's what we're gonna go over next. So right here is the top for a kitchen table that we're working on right now. It's sitting on these really nice uh, assembly tables we got from Uline. They're big, they roll, they're sturdy, they're great. I wish I had five more of them. We'll probably get five more of them at a certain point, but um, for now they work great. And that's what we do most of our assembly and final stuff on. So it gets pretty hot here in Houston and uh, this is not an air conditioned warehouse. So we got some big ass fans. Don't demonetize me YouTube, that's what they're called. This is still a family friendly channel. So the fans move a lot of air, even it's only on like one quarter of the speed right now. And I can still feel a pretty good breeze coming down even as slow as the blades are moving. These fans are just so big that they just move a ton of air. It can be really nice in these August Houston summers. So, so would you say you like these? Yeah, I like them. So you're a fan? Shut up. <laughs> we also have some of these nice floor fans just to help keep things moving down the hallways. And because um, as much as air as these fans move, they don't reach everywhere. So um, the tunnel fans help to uh, keep things stirred up. Also, newest addition to the shop. This is the best shop vac ever. I don't care what your shop vac does. Mine's better. It's cool. Take a look. In three seconds. Turns into a leaf blower. And then when you're done. It's back to a shop vac. You've probably noticed these big gray things on the walls. They're just to help with sound dampening. Um, they really do make a difference, especially the higher pitched frequencies like the impact driver and the drill, which bounces and reverberates all over the place. So it really helps us out with filming. It also helps out just to make it not feel like such a, I don't know, just a tin can of a workshop. Big shop means big scrap bucket. This is where we keep all of our scrap. It's a gigantic rubber container. Got it for Uline. line. It's fantastic. You guys buy the scraps out of it. It's wonderful. Over here, we got another assembly table with way too many tools on it. We've got another one of these uh, work benches things that's got a tourniquet and a bandage on it. Um, yeah, this is, this is the most uncoordinated part of the shop just because we haven't built a bunch of tables yet. So we're just sort of preparing the space to, to do that. Speaking of preparing the space to do tables, this is club finish. This is where we spray all the finish for our stuff. Eventually, this is gonna be an, like an auto body downdraft spray booth. Um, but for now, it's just gonna be this pop-up tent and uh, I gotta get some lights to go in here because it gets kind of dark under here. And- um, What's up neighbor? <laughs> anyway, uh, it gets dark and it's hard to see the finish, you know, the glossiness of the finish being sprayed. So I'm gonna hang some lights and just keep the finish contained uh, under the tent. And while we're on the topic of spraying finish, we use a Fuji Mini Mite 4. It's a really nice spray system. I could probably use a new gun. 
The learning curve is pretty steep with HVLP sprayers, but once you get it, um, it's really easy to clean up, it's really easy to maintain, and it just sprays on the finish so fast and so easy, it's worth the cleanup time. But yeah, so this is gonna be the corner for finishing stuff. And yes, this does mean we have to now move the basketball hoop because it's kind of in the way of our finishing corner. So it's gonna scoot over that way uh, on this garage door over here. And moving right along, we have our two glow forges that engrave our boards. Here's our board inventory on this nice shelving rack. And we have an exhaust vent for the lasers uh, with room to grow. It's a six inch pipe going all the way to the roof. So. Um, we got to get a bigger blower motor when we get a bigger laser, but again, bigger, better, more later needs more money now. So this other hallway is really just dedicated to board fulfillment right now. We've got the inventory, we've got the lasers, we've got the fulfillment table with all of our paper and boxes. Then on this side, we have a separate table set up for finishing all the boards just so the finish doesn't cross and touch the wax paper over there and leave marks. But later on, we hope to store kitchen table tops um, on the remaining part of this wall. But for now, this is just the cutting board side of the warehouse. Can you believe that we had basically this whole side of the hallway in our living room? All of this was in my living room, the fulfillment station, the table, the laptop, the glow forge, the inventory, all of it. it feels so good to have my house back. <laughs> And then one of my favorite things about this whole shop is this janitorial sink over here in the corner. We paid extra to have this installed when we moved in. Um, oh my gosh, it was worth every stinking penny. Have hot water, cold water, big tub to wash the finish gun out with. It's just come in handy so many times. Um, it's been really nice. I don't know if you've seen a lot of these, but we use carts to move things around. When you're building things like one-offs or, or three or four at a time, you can just carry them from one place to another. But when you're doing things in batches of 75 to 100, it really helps to have some carts to help you move things around. So these Uline carts or Rubbermaid carts, wherever we got them, they're just, they're so nice to have. And make sure you put swivel casters on all four corners so you can move them in any direction. That really helps. So that pretty much concludes the warehouse tour. Now we're gonna start getting into the office space. We do have some storage available above the office space right here, but we haven't really needed to use it yet. So haven't gone up there much. So when you first come in, uh, we still haven't figured out what to do with this entryway room. Right now it holds epoxy and glue so it doesn't freeze out there. Um, but still don't know what to do with this room over here. Um, but this is the Jenny and Davis side. We'll show you the Samara side in a minute. But the Jenny and Davis side, there's a sink, a little kitchenette here, a bathroom, and then our studio, which you've seen way too much in our videos. This is the shelf where we store all of our camera gear. This is the shelf where we store all of our other things we don't know where to put. <laughs> uh, and then we've got our desks back here um, and we're trying to get the walls decorated and stuff. So it's coming along pretty nicely. And then of course we have Caleb's desk right here. Caleb, I'm taking an M&M. But moving on over to the Samara side, I'll hand you off to Jenny since this is sort of her realm. <laughs> Welcome to my domain. Um, so this is the entryway for the Samara office. We just have it looking kind of cute, the rug. We've got our snack bar over here. Eventually it'll turn into a bigger, better break room with more tables and chairs. But this and is- And a what chef. There's gonna be a chef? Big goals, Jenny. Oh my gosh. Anyways, no chef as of right now, just Cheez-Its and some um, Keurig pods, but that's okay. And then as we move in here, this is just kind of like a little server room. This is the door to the shop. This is just a door to another bathroom. And then as we come through here, this is like my little photo studio. This is where I take all the pictures of the boards, got some nice lights. This is the backdrop that I use to take to events and take pictures with boards and all that kind of stuff. Eventually we're gonna make this way fancier. I wanna lay like some fake wood floors, maybe even real wood floors, I don't know, over this carpet so it makes it easier to take pictures of kitchen tables. It makes it look like they're in an actual kitchen. And then when you come back here, this is my sales office. 
Um, I wanted it to be really cozy in here, but also wanted to have some really good angles to take pictures for social media, do TikToks, reels, all that sort of stuff. So I've got my desk over in the corner, over here, just calendars and places to hold paperwork. Um, and then a nice couch. A lot of times if I'm doing some Instagram video prospecting for clients, I'll sit here. It's just a really nice background. Um, and then a shelf where I keep all of my staging decorations. So I've got vases, flowers, confetti, all sorts Major of stuff. And your celebration confetti poppers. And my celebration confetti poppers, which I just made a sale the other day and I forgot to pop one because I made the sale on the phone in the car. And then I came to work the next day and I was like, I completely forgot, but that's okay. So over here is a really nice backdrop. Um, if you follow any of our Samara Table Company stuff, you probably recognize this. I just really wanted it to be a nice looking office. And the question all of you are probably wondering right now is what does something like this cost? It's gonna vary wherever you are, but here in Houston, it costs about $4,000 a month. We had an absolutely amazing broker and he got the price all the way down to about a dollar per square foot per month. And the landlord was nice enough to let us stack the back half of this lease, which basically means the rent is cheaper now and it'll get more expensive later. Which is really helpful for a small growing business because as we grow, we will have more money to pay the higher rent, but right now, it's just much more affordable. And that brings us to our last piece of advice. If you are looking for a commercial warehouse space, make sure you get a broker. Renting out commercial space is completely different than trying to rent out residential space or buying a house or anything like that. It's a whole different animal. So get a broker, because they're gonna make all the difference in the world. So it's been really exciting getting all of these tools moved into our new space. But what's more exciting is getting more people moved into this space. And that's what we're gonna cover in next week's video. Ask me how I do it, I just stick to the game.